Now, when I sat at my keyboard to write my speech, I was waiting for a moment of lightning to strike. An interesting idea, a profound insight, maybe even just a funny joke. Anything to relieve the inevitable imposter syndrome I knew I would face sitting before you today. But that moment never came, and I spent many late nights banging my head against the wall, reflecting on who I was and what I actually wanted to say. Now, the question I grappled with on all those late nights is the same question that I pose to you now. How do we make lightning strike? Now, lightning striking can mean different things for everybody. Serendipitously falling in love, witnessing a miracle, maybe even getting your dream job. What I mean by lightning striking is those moments that have an instantly transformative impact on our lives and the lives of those around us. I'm willing to bet that everyone sitting in this room today has had a moment of lightning striking in their lives or finds themselves wishing the lightning would strike more in their life, as I often find myself doing. All of my greatest heroes seem to have moments of lightning striking. Barack Obama was a state senator when he addressed the 2004 Democratic Convention, skyrocketing him onto the national stage and playing a big role in his eventual presidency. Bill Gates went to the Seattle private school with one of the world's first computers, skyrocketed him to starting Microsoft. And Jacqueline Novogratz was an American that didn't even have a passport when a firm sent her overseas to this far away land of Africa. The insight she picked up there led to her starting the social enterprise acumen. For a long time, I searched the lives of these great leaders, trying to understand their secret of how they made lightning strike. I trawled over their biographies, listened to endless podcasts, and said way too many, hey, I love to prick your brain over coffee messages on LinkedIn. But here's the kicker. With time, I realized I was spending too much energy trying to force lightning to strike, and not enough energy reflecting on where I actually wanted to go, where I wanted to redirect the energy from these transformative experiences to a place that was truly meaningful for me. It took interviewing a hundred of the world's best leaders and a lot of false starts to get a little bit closer to the answer. I'm Sachin, and a younger version of me wouldn't believe the wonderful serendipity that has happened in my life. A warm introduction landed an interview with Malcolm Turnbull. A LinkedIn post led to me writing for The Australian, and a podcast episode led to my dream job as an investment manager at Airtrade, one of the largest venture capital firms in the country. But I promise that's the last of the humble brags. I was told that I need to establish credibility up front. But the truth is, through my highs and a lot of my lows, I've been convinced of one thing. If you work hard enough, lightning will strike. Now, I left the dramatic pause in there for effect, especially because we've all heard this idea before. Play the long game, work like nobody's watching, blah, blah, blah. Most of us are slightly impatient, and we want lightning to strike sooner rather than later. I know that I was. For much of my life, I've been in a rush, racing against who knows who, trying to, trying to fill up my resume, get every internship possible, and consume information at every waking moment. But it's actually the seemingly random things that I've done in my life that have led to moments of lightning striking. Back in 2019, me and my best mate were bored in an economics history lecture. We just come back from exchange and we decided to go to a studio and just talk about our experiences. We uploaded the video that night, not even knowing that this was called a podcast. For years, we kept on going on top of full-time work and other commitments, often at late nights and on weekends. Our friends, our colleagues, even our ex-girlfriends questioned why we kept on doing this podcast in the face of limited traction. But the truth was, we're having fun. We're getting to interview the world's most interesting people and follow our endless curiosities. We made a pact to each other that we would keep doing this podcast if only one person listened. That podcast, that hobby, has been responsible for everything meaningful that has happened in my life since. From speaking at conferences, to writing a book, to frankly me standing right here today, all from, what, all from following what came absolutely naturally to me. And here's a big statement that I am grossly underqualified to be making. Everyone sitting in this room today is ambitious, is curious. You wouldn't be here otherwise. Lightning is going to strike in your life. And I know you may not believe me now, but it will. It may come from a hobby that you've been doing for a long time, 
or it may come from a random event that happens tomorrow, but it will happen. For the rest of this talk, I want us to think about the other parts of our lives. Our hopes, our dreams, our failures, our defeats, and all those little stories that make us the people that we are. Because I believe those are the things that hold the secret to making lightning strike. Now, I mentioned at the start of this talk that I've been spending a lot of time trying to force lightning to strike without reflecting on where I actually want it to go. After interviewing a hundred of the world's best leaders, this has been a surprising but consistent thing. Peter Hunt, co-founded Investment Bank. At the heart of his success, he was still suffering from depression. An experience with psilocybin led to him uncovering a lot of the trauma that he felt early in his life from his dad's suicide. He realized that this is where he wanted to direct his energy. He's now co-founded the charity Mind Medicine Australia, which helps more Australians access psychedelic assisted therapy. James Tynan was a rising star at McKinsey and Khan Academy. He had lightning strike in his life. He scaled educational products to tens of millions of people around the world. But this isn't where James truly needed to be. James suffered multiple autoimmune conditions as a result of the stress, and he now optimizes for a career that gives him energy rather than drains it. Elizabeth Robert was a partner at Ashurst, the global law firm, where she witnessed the discrimination and mistreatment of women in the workforce. This is where she wanted to direct her lightning. She became the Australian Sex Discrimination Commissioner and one of the few UN Special Rapporteurs for women's rights across the world. See, many of the world's top leaders had had lightning strike in their lives, but arguably not in the right places. And when we spoke to them, they wished that they had come to this conclusion earlier. As ambitious individuals, it's easy to get swept up in mimetic desire, mimicking the goals and dreams of those around us without really reflecting on who we are and how we want to spend our lives. So my journey of making lightning strike, I was at a junction. I knew that I probably shouldn't be trying to force into areas which were not meaningful for me, but I didn't have the faintest idea of how to find where I actually wanted my lightning to strike. Like everything else in my life, I asked people that were much smarter than me. I began to ask podcast guests a simple but thought-provoking question at the start of every episode. And it goes something like this. Excuse the podcast voice. Before we dive into this week's episode, we'd love to try to understand you better as a person. When we strip back all the layers of your achievements and all these conceptions that people have about you, what really drives you at your core? Now, this simple question led to a lot of reflection, often all the way back to our guests' childhood and pivotal experiences in their lives. Ronnie Khan, the founder of the amazing charity Oz Harvest, which I'm sure you've all heard of, spoke about the impact of growing up with parents who are activists. Early in her life, she moved to Israel and she lived on a kibbutz, a kind of collective agricultural-based community where all resources are shared. However, when Ronnie moved to Australia, she deviated from this. She began to chase money and prestige through an events company. And in our, question, in our conversation, she reflected on the fact that she deviated from the, run, the young Ronnie at a core. The young Ronnie that chased altruism and impact with all of her heart. She now is living the young Ronnie's dreams, fighting food waste across Australia. The famous venture capitalist Rex Woodbury spoke about how growing up as a gay man in America, he felt that he needed to achieve in order to fit in. For much of his life, he had chased this achievement. He went to Stanford, Dartmouth, Goldman Sachs, and followed all the other smartest kids in their endeavors. When he reflected on the fact that a lot of what was driving this was this part of him that didn't really accept who he was, he changed course. He became an investor and a creator, working with the people and stories that truly light his heart on fire. But this isn't just an anecdotal observation by a couple of podcast pros. The American Psychological Association found that 76% of people that reflect on a regular basis report a stronger sense of purpose and fulfillment in their life compared to only 40% of those that didn't engage in this reflective behavior. After coming to this realization, I started having a look at my own life. I had conversations with my friends and families about who I really was. I've always had this vague conception that I was motivated by impact. Early in my life, I wanted to be a human rights lawyer, then it was working for the World Bank. 
but I never really knew where I wanted my lightning to strike. And it actually goes a long, long way back. My brother, my best friend, was born with cerebral palsy. This means that he uses a wheelchair. He's the most optimistic person I've ever met. He sits on a board, he goes to university, he plays a Paralympic sport. I truly live life in his shadow. Now, I was reflecting on all of the things that have impacted my brother's life. Apart from my amazing parents, the one thing I kept on coming back to was technology. Whether that's his technology of his electric wheelchair, which allows him to be standing next to me in this photo and to move around independently by himself. Whether that's the cutting edge surgeries he's had that allow him to have an increase in mobility. Or whether that's something as simple as his Apple Watch, which allows him to still communicate with people even if he drops his phone on the ground. Technology is the enabling force. And that's when it hit me. What really drives me at my core is this idea that technology can impact change at scale. Whether that's helping people like my brother have more mobility, whether that's helping people in developing nations get access to critical goods and services through drone delivery, or whether that's deep tech advancements that are pulling carbon out of our atmosphere at record scale, technology is the enabling force. But more deeply, I realize that what we choose to commit ourselves to in our lives, where we choose to direct this lightning when it strikes, is a product of who we are in our totality. It's a product of our relationships. It's a product of our deepest passions. It's a product about the things that we tell our friends about on the weekends. It's a product of those things that we often forget. Now, this realization has completely transformed the way I live my life. I'm more intentional on the ups and downs of the journey and more content in the way I go after my career. A stark contrast from young Sachin that scraped at all corners of his ambition. Making lightning strike is a different journey for everybody. For some, it may mean looking deep into your past. For others, it may mean trying as many new things as possible. I'm not here to tell you where your lightning should strike. I'm here to tell you to ask that question in the first place. But I wasn't going to leave you high and dry. I'm a technology investor after all. I know you probably can't see this, but these are reflection questions given by ChatGPT, of all things. I know it's a bit of a cliche, but I want to leave you with one thing. If you can make lightning strike anywhere in your life, where would you truly want it to go? Thank you. <laughs>